The ACLU, which is known for supporting access to the courts and usually opposes forcing American workers and consumers into arbitration, is trying to force one of its former employees into arbitration. No joke. The National Labor Relations Board has luckily denied the ACLU's request to appeal an administrative law judge's decision against forced arbitration. But let's get to the bottom of what the ACLU is trying to do here and the impact that it could have on all employees in this country should they be successful. Now the ACLU has arbitration agreements with its employees and is apparently doggedly trying to use those agreements to keep them from accessing the National Labor Relations Board. Should employers at the ACLU violate some of the you know, rights that their employees have. Now, of course, if, if there's been some sort of labor dispute, you're able to go to the NLRB and file a complaint, but the ACLU is trying to prevent one of their former employees from being able to do that and from for the ACLU, I'm sorry, the NLRB from being able to make a decision on that case. So the whole dispute involving the ACLU centers around their firing of a former staffer by the name of Catherine O. So let's get to the bottom of what the ACLU is claiming about O. So they say that Miss O was terminated for violation of her obligation to maintain a workplace free of harassment, including in her engaging in repeated hurtful and insightful conduct for colleagues that impugns their reputation and her demonstration of a pattern of hostility toward people of color, particularly black men, and her significant insubordination. So they're accusing her of mistreating black employees at the ACLU. So then they get specific, so let's get to the specificity. And before we do, Cenk. A lot of mainstream media don't give you honest news, we do. You know why? Because of you. Paid membership on YouTube makes all the difference. Hit the join button below and you become the hero that sustains us. So guys. You could have, there's two layers to the story, which is should the ACL be, ACLU be trying to diminish workers' rights? That seems very ironic. Secondly, is what she did so wrong and outrageous that they need to force it into arbitration, etc. And so I don't love the insubordination. I get why management would be have a tr problem with someone who's not doing what they're asked to do, right? On the other hand, wait till you see the examples, like because this is, it's one thing to say, hey, she is complaining about this or that. It's another thing to say that it's racial. She's not discriminating against people underneath her. She's complaining about her managers who happen to be minorities. And that is one of the most core rights that a worker has mm -hmm. is to complain about managers. So as a manager, I don't love it, but of course they have that right, of course they do. And the ACLU doesn't know this. And they're going and fighting this hard? No, they know. That's crazy. This is crazy. And Jenk, before I continue, can you explain why the ACLU would prefer this former employee's case to go through arbitration as opposed to being adjudicated by the National Labor Relations Board? Yeah, so there's a couple of different reasons. One is that Biden's NLRB is pretty good, so they're good at protecting workers' rights, so they're worried about that. Two is that the courts cost a lot more in terms of legal fees for lawyers, etc. even if you win. But three, the thing that they're most concerned about is that they can get a very hefty you know, settlement or adjudication against them in a civil court, whereas arbitration, the amounts are much more limited. So mm -hmm. the arbitration is much more friendly towards employers and not employees, which the ACLU at some point used to care about. Now, here's what they alleged. In their filings, by the way, these are in the court filings. You can totally like read them for yourself. And in fact, Matt Brunig, who writes for Substack under the Substack title NLRB Edge, has the receipts. And I can't even believe that these were the allegations that they made against her. So, after the national political director, after the national political director, a manager that Miss O and her colleagues had submitted complaints against left the organization. Miss O joked in a meeting announcing the departure that the beatings will continue until morale improves. The ACLU DEI officer said this comment was racist because the former national political director is a black man. That's insane. I don't, guys, I don't. 
What, what does that have to do with him being black? First of all, it's a joke, let it go. Second of all, if beatings are associated with any ethnic group, I would say it would be white people, wouldn't it? I mean, I just, given the history of this country. So I don't know how you twist that into that's a racial stereotype against black people. This is crazy. I mean, it's like you're trying to make some weirdo case against her in a way that is inexplicable. Here's what I know exactly. They weaponized race to justify her firing. That's what they did. Okay, mm -hmm. but let me give you more. Miss O said in a phone meeting that she was afraid to raise certain issues with her direct supervisor. This was also described as racist because that supervisor is a black man. It's absurd, it's absurd. I've been an employee, I've been an employer for decades now. The number one thing people wanna do is they're afraid to raise concerns about their manager because they're worried that they could get him in trouble, right? That is a, they sh like depending on where you work. I know that sometimes if I raise concerns with about management, I would have gotten fired as in some places I did, okay? You don't get that here, but we have a, a orderly way of doing it. I'm not opposed to them firing someone who's insubordinate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there's no need to make this racial yeah. in this insane way. Everyone's afraid to raise concerns about their manager, and it has nothing to do with it, with whether they're black or not. I don't even saying that it's because they're black to me feels like that charge is more racist than the actual statement by a lot. What like why are you assuming she'd be afraid of him because of his physical nature? That's just a weird assumption. Finally, they say Miss O claimed that another manager lied to her when she identified the members of management who had ultimate responsibility over whether to proceed with a particular campaign. This was also racist because that manager is a black woman. I just Come on, guys. So like what you can't ever criticize anybody of any race because then it's you're by definition doing it because of their race? No, you have to have evidence that it she was racially it, motivated. That she did it because of the race. You can't just say she criticized someone, hence that's racist. That's not a thing. And you're and when we see these absurd stories, what happens? People then go, oh, you know, all charges of racism at work are BS. That's not true. There's plenty of charges that are true, right? That are very hurtful to people that are people of color, to black folks, to etc. But it's usually people who are at the lower rungs and are getting abused by their bosses, etc. It's not the the very top of the organization saying, "How dare you criticize me? I will now call my all my uh, subordinates racist." That's it's Let's, not like it can't happen, but it certainly doesn't look like it happened here. Let's just pause to take note of and appreciate the fact that it, an organization that is meant to protect free speech and civil liberties is currently attempting to punish a former employee for expressing her thoughts on higher ups within the ACLU. Okay, that, that's what this Deeply is about. Deeply ironic, that's okay. a great point. So with that said, the ACLU firing her for this alleged behavior is actually a huge problem because complaining about supervisors in a concerted way, according to Matt Brunick, is protected activity under section seven of the NLRB. Also, O engaged in protected complaints at the workplace about workplace conditions. The ACLU fired her explicitly in retaliation for those complaints and thereby violated section eight a1 of the NLRA. And in other words, look, she had the right to bring these complaints to management, to higher ups at the ACLU, and she was punished for it and labeled and smeared as a racist as a result, even though there was no evidence of her engaging in any racist behavior or commentary. Now, in regard to the whole arbitration process, basically, the ACLU just wants us to go through arbitration. They don't want the NLRB to handle it. The NLRB luckily has weighed in and basically slapped the ACLU down and said, no, we're gonna uphold a judge's decision, an administrative judge's decision to allow her to have this case heard by the NLRB. And so I'm happy that they're making this decision. But final point I'll make, actually the final point Matt Brudig, who wrote this piece made that I think is important to share with you, is the fact that employers have their individual workers, some employers, have them sign arbitration agreements in order to work for them. But 
cannot use those agreements to prevent workers from bringing unfair labor practice charges to the NLRB. So in the case of the ACLU, yes, they have their employees sign the arbitration agreements. But that doesn't mean they can never go to the NLRB if their rights at work have been violated. And that's what happened here. The ACLU is trying to change this, right? They're trying to change it so no, you have to go through arbitration. It has now submitted one answer, two motions, one request for a special permission to appeal and two replies all arguing that the NLRB should for the first time ever require that victims of unfair labor practices be forced into arbitration even if the arbitration agreement they are subject to is an individual one, not one that was collectively bargained. And again, if it's an individual one, you're supposed to have the right to go to the NLRB. They wanna change that, which wouldn't just have an impact on Catherine O, the fired employee. It would have an impact on every single worker in the country who is not part of a union, but signed an arbitration agreement as part of their employment. Those employees wouldn't be able to go to the NLRB if the ACLU succeeded in what they're doing here. And luckily they're not.